Welcome to a Bonsai in Buffalo video. Here are easy step-by-step -step instructions for sharpening your tools. Here are the tools that we're going to talk about today. Large Bonsai scissors, bud scissors, knob cutters, and concave cutters. The supplies that we need to sharpen these are a flat wet stone, which we're going to wet right now by putting it in a little pan of water and a convex whetstone that has a convex side. We're going to wet that as well. Here is a rust eraser, which looks like a pencil eraser, but it has grit in it. A small block of wood, a hammer, a piece of metal which we use as an anvil, spray can of silicone or oil spray and eye protection wherever we use our hammer. Let's get going. The first thing that we want to do is to remove the rust and tree sap from our tools. The <clears throat> I like the uh, the rust eraser and prefer that to turpentine. Turpentine can also be used to take the rust, uh, to take the uh, sap off your tools, but unfortunately, turpentine does not remove rust. So the so the rust eraser does the thing in one fell swoop and very efficiently. The next thing that we want to do before we start sharpening is to figure out if our tools need adjustment. To that, just rattle the tool. Just shake the tool back and forth, and if you hear a rattle, you've got some more work to do. Nope, that's good. Let's try the concave cutters. We're getting some rattling out of the concave cutters, and for this, I'm going to put on my eye protection, and we're going to hammer on the soft metal rivet which holds the two blades together. Put that on the anvil. And you'll notice that there's no rattling now. So we've adjusted the tool and we're ready for the next step. Let's get back to the scissors. For that, <clears throat> we take hold of one of the scissor handles and Take our whetstone and pass that over its blade. Make three or four good swipes and make sure that you work away from you so that you don't cut yourself on the blade. On the reverse side or the back side, clean off your burrs, turn over your tool, do the same thing on the cutting edge of the scissors Working away from you again, swipe in the back. Now you can test your work. You slowly close the scissors and if you feel them hang up, the two blades hang up on each other, you know you've got more work to do. This one worked out well, so we're on to the next step. Let's take our knob cutters. The knob cutters are cupped and they have a concave surface on the inside of them which is one of their cutting surfaces. Again, you hold on to the tool handle and take the convex side of this whetstone, which happens to be a fisherman's hook whetstone, and you go on the inside of the blade on the knob cutters. And you finish off by going lightly on the exterior of the knob cutters. Now you're going to use on the concave cutters, there's only one blade on the concave cutters and that's inside. Hold the handle and move the whetstone away from you. Again, 
you're going to want to work on the entire surface of the tool, which is the manufacturer's cutting edge. You want to keep your tool, your grinding stone parallel to and right on top of that surface. Take our burrs off with just a couple quick swipes. Dry our tools. And we're ready to go. So after you're done, oh, I should also say one thing about the cutting surfaces on knob cutters and concave cutters. They're designed by the manufacturer not to meet. This is not a manufacturing defect. When you look at them closely, you will see that they don't meet, and that's to keep those blades sharp. So <clears throat> don't attempt to try to alter that cutting surface on these two tools because you will defeat the purpose of the tool and you will cause the, uh, the tool to dull itself up. So now that we're done with our sharpening, we give it a quick shot of silicone or a light oil spray, wipe it off, and we're done. Sharpen your bonsai tools at least once a year. When you maintain your tools, you're going to have reliable tools for a long time.